Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Will Gerling, a sports and performance nutritionist, and today we're talking about nitrates, its effect on performance, its effect on health. Should you take it? Should you not? Why do we want to take nitrates? Well, nitrates convert into nitric oxide within the body and this causes vasodilation, so all the blood vessels increase in diameter, allowing more blood to come through. It also has been seen to reduce the oxygen cost of submaximal exercise. So you're getting more blood through, and you're also doing the exercise for less cost, better efficiency, which is pretty cool. That's why we take it. So our first study is by Joe et al, 2019. It had 15 males, 14 females, super balanced, really happy with that, like it. 15 day supplementation of 500 milligrams a day. The improvement they saw over their study was 4.2%. It was a time trial session. So they did, I think it was 10 kilometers. Focus on the factor that is 4.2% performance improvement. Okay, our next study by Nayaka Yiru et al. 2014, who had 17 men at 65 millimole VO2 max, which is, means they're pretty well trained. And they did six days of supplement, supplementation at 800 milligrams. They saw no effect. So there was nothing here. And it's nice to see that where we've had a mixed cohort with 15 days at 500 milligrams, seems improvement, and then six days, no improvement. We have another study by a guy called Kermak et al, 2012. 13 males at a VO2 max of about 58 millimoles, so really well trained as well. Taking six days of 600 milligrams saw a performance improvement when doing 65% VO2 max for two hours and then a 10K time trial at the end. 10K is really low. I, I don't understand why they want to do 10K. Like it's, you know, nobody does 10K TK, uh, TTs. You know, they do 10 miles, they do 25 miles, they do 50 miles, they do 100 miles. Like who, who the fuck does 10K? Maybe it's a solo finish at the end of a sub max race because that happens so often. Where do they come up with these trials? Like no race is like, yeah, they did, <laughs> they did 600 milligrams for six days, saw a performance improvement. Okay, so there's two studies that's saying yes, there's one study that's saying no, like what do we do? Let's look at some other cool, interesting parts like, there's one guy called uh, Van Hatalo, 2011, who did nitrate supplementation whilst at altitude. So something called hypoxia, which is where you have reduced oxygen availability around you. That is essentially altitude training. If you're a very keen cyclist, if you're a very keen triathlete or marathon runner, then you may go to altitude for a training camp if you're that serious. It might be worthwhile taking nitrates over that time because they did see a performance improvement to moderate to high intensity efforts at altitude whilst taking 600 milligrams of nitrate per day. There's an, a study by Clifford et al 2015 looking more at the health factors of nitrates and nitrates do seem to have an effect on reducing inflammation, high levels of antioxidants, also seem to reduce blood pressure and some other health factors that aren't fully proven so I don't think they're worthwhile bringing up, uh, things looking at like cancer and so on. But that's probably more to do with the antioxidants and reductions in free radicals and so on. But like I said, not fully proven, not worth truly mentioning. And this looked at nitrates across the board. It wasn't just beetroot juice, it was like pomegranate juice, which has high levels of nitrates um, and other sources of nitrates and comparing the amounts and then the effect on health. And it seems to be positively um, improving. Getting a high dietary intake of nitrates from like your dark leafy greens, from beetroot, from pomegranate is gonna be worthwhile, but not supplementing, I don't think, on a regular basis, like a, you know, a supplement, like a multivitamin or something. I think just try and get real good sources of food into your diet. And lastly, we come up with our study that is a meta-analysis. Now, meta-analyses papers are the standard, the highest standard of paper. It is a compilation of lots of studies into one to give a recommendation, to give you a consensus on the data out there. So we have Van der Waal et al. 2018. 
and they compiled 17 studies. And when looking at trained individuals, they saw a total of 0.9% improvement. Now, let's take that. 0.9% improvement is very minor. But if you are very competitive, if you find that racing is important to you, if you are maybe a Cat 1 or elite cyclist or even a Cat 2 cyclist and you want to move up, then to be honest, even other category level cyclists, if you are a 70.3 Ironman triathlete or a uh, full distance Ironman triathlete, if you are racing age group, all these areas where you are being competitive, you are putting in months and months of work, 0.9% makes a difference. And it makes a difference to you who want to win, who want to get a PB. So supplementation ranging from six to 15 days of about 500 to 800 milligrams per day seems to give it a performance improvement in trained males and females of about 0.9% average. That's an average. So obviously we saw the first paper showed 4.2% increase and we have another one that said nothing. So 0.9 improvement. So what does this all mean? I'm going to bring it all together. Okay, so we know that it improves performance at altitude. We know there's studies that say it's not worthwhile. We know there's studies that say it is worthwhile. And we know a general overall consensus that you get a 0.9% improvement. What do I think? I think that you need to practice it. I think you need to take some nitrates in practice and see how it tastes, how you feel on it. Does it agree with your stomach? I know that some people don't agree with it in their stomach. Other people love it. Practice that and then just take it for competitions, just for important events and races, because if you are going to try and take it for six to 15 days, that is going to cost you money. You're looking at about 20 to 25 pounds to achieve multi-day servings of use. My recommendation to my athletes is particularly time trialists, Ironman in particular, um, 70.3 Ironman, I would do it. If you're doing sprint distance triathlon, probably not worth it. Um, marathons also would probably be worth it, um, especially ultra distance. Anything that's quite longer duration, um, some particular key road races, potentially. Um, I wouldn't do it for crit racing. And also think about what kind of rider you are. But if you're a very competitive, highly trained rider, you're gonna get more out of it, I think, from what you're wanting and going for, but it's gonna cost however much, you know, 20, 30 pounds for each race. Might add up over your season. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you, tell me what you think. Remember to hit that subscribe button to tune in for more videos uh, talking about science, talking about health, talking about how you can improve your performance from other foods, supplements, and the, and the current evidence out there. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.